Federal safety experts will meet tomorrow to approve their final report on the crash of American Airlines Flight 587 in Queens three years ago. They're expected to rule that rudder movements by the pilots caused the plane's tail to break off. But others believe something very different took place. Carolyn Gussoff is here with that story. Jim and Sue, for three years there has been little official dispute about what happened to Flight 587. It's believed the plane hit wake turbulence and that the pilot pushed the rudder back and forth so aggressively it tore the tail off. But not everyone accepts that version of events. There's a growing number of witnesses, lay people, and even some aviation experts publicly challenging the official investigation. November 12, 2001, a plane like this one was climbing over Jamaica Bay. We noticed that the plane was on fire. It was a, quite a large fire it's toward the middle of the plane. Uh, and uh, I said, wow, that plane is in trouble. Jamaica Bay was dotted with fishing boats that November morning. It was peak season for striped bass. Suddenly the boats were front row seats to a tragic spectacle. There was an explosion around mid-section mid of the plane somewhere around the wing area. I couldn't tell if it was the engine or fuselage or what part it was, but it was something exploded. Terry O'Claire says the image is seared into his memory. Fire raging from the jet as it passed overhead. Seconds later, the tail fell off. The plane was in control, it was listing, but it had it all intact and it was a, fl a flame coming out the side with a fire, a severe fire coming out the side. And the fire was uh, absolutely, you know, a few seconds or maybe even 10 seconds that I noticed before the tail came off. 39 witnesses say they heard explosions or saw the plane on fire before the tail fell off, before American Airlines Flight 587 spiraled out of control. And yet the NTSB has never acknowledged there was a fire in its preliminary reports. It's expected to conclude that the Airbus taking off from Kennedy heading to the Dominican Republic encountered wake turbulence from a plane ahead of it, and that in response, the pilot aggressively moved the rudder, causing it to break off. On the eve of the NTSB's final report, witnesses say they've been ignored by everyone except this man. The current thesis, or theory, conclusions coming from the NTSB are flat out wrong. The pilot was not a contributing factor to this crash, and neither do we believe was the, t the separation of the tail. It was a consequence of the crash sequence. Victor Trombettis is the force behind usread.com, a website that's published an exhaustive study on the crash of Flight 587. Trombettis, a computer expert, and Brett Hofstad, an aerospace engineer, don't make money off the website, but it's become their passion. They've dissected every shred of data released by the NTSB and have come up with a vastly different conclusion. They believe the second worst aviation accident in U.S. history may not have been an accident at all. We think the indications are very strong that there was a fire or explosion before the tail separated. There are only two possible causes for that. A, it's a terrorist act, or B, it was an accidental fire or explosion. Just hours after Flight 587 plunged into a residential neighborhood in the Rockaways, killing all 260 souls on board and five people on the ground, NTSB uh, Chair Marion Blakey dubbed it an, an accident. That, say the publishers of U.S. Read, was a rush to judgment. They believe the NTSB went on to misinterpret evidence and miss clues. For instance, they say transmissions recorded by the FAA are not heard on the cockpit voice recorder. Nice game. Stops and starts on the cockpit voice recorder, they speculate, could have been caused by an onboard fire or explosion. They also challenged the NTSB's theory that the tail was the first part of the plane to break off. Witnesses say debris was falling before the tail separated. Much of the debris sank, and the NTSB never performed any scuba or underwater searches for that, and they simply cannot explain this crash without that earliest debris. Just who are these citizen investigators? They say they're not conspiracy theorists. They don't think there's a cover-up. They do think the NTSB theory is flawed, that tail separation was not the cause of the crash, but rather the result of some catastrophic event inside the plane. And they have some heavyweights backing them up. Vernon Gross is a former member of the NTSB. They have ignored all the witness statements, and they're pretty unanimous uh, from a lot of different p positions, both on water and land, that there was some fire or some explosion in that airplane prior to the tail leaving. If that's true, then the tail is not the initiating event. 
The doomed flight is also caught on tape by video cameras rolling on the Marine Parkway Bridge. Critics say it too pokes holes in the NTSB's theory. The airplane doesn't begin descending and showing any indications of a major structural breakup until eight seconds after the NTSB says those events occurred. Now, what does the NTSB say about all this? They won't comment on U.S. reads specifically, but they do say no law enforcement agency has presented them with any evidence that the crash was the result of a deliberate criminal act or anything but an accident. They also say they'll address the witness observations at tomorrow's board meeting. Leaving the door open for perhaps some more investigation? No, but leaving the door open for an explanation, perhaps, as to what the witnesses think they saw. Now, some of these witnesses you had in your piece, have they spoken to the NTSB, talked about fire? The, the witnesses did give reports, but mostly written reports. Many of them say they were not interviewed by the NTSB, and they feel that the investigation is incomplete. Carolyn Gussoff, thank you. Thank you.